Hello, everyone. Welcome to TVMC 2020. I'm Sunny Gupta, Aptio CEO and co-founder, and I'm very excited to share the state of the TBM market and how business leaders are deploying TBM and Aptio to get ready for the world post-COVID-19. I'm really sad that this year we don't have the opportunity to be together in person, as one of my favorite parts is connecting with all of you and hearing incredible stories of how you're leveraging Aptio and TBM to create incredible business value for your organizations. I know it's been very different this year for all of you. COVID-19 has catapulted all of us to change the way we work, forcing every company to become digital first. When thinking about this past year, two words that come to mind, disruption and opportunity. COVID-19 has disrupted our day-to-day. -day. It has really forced all of you to take a deeper look into your budgets rapidly identify where the money is being spent, and quickly replan and reforecast. At the same time, you're having to shift your conversations to be focused on the value of your technology investments. I know CFOs have been much more engaged in conversations around technology budget than ever before. In fact, this reminds me a lot of the first financial crisis when Aptio was born in 2008. TBM was born due to the crisis, and I believe TBM adoption will accelerate in this post-COVID-19 world. The current pandemic is also providing opportunities for accelerating digital transformation, including the journey to the cloud and shedding legacy systems. According to Gartner, through 2021, COVID-19 impacts will push at least 60% enterprises to accelerate their focus on digital technologies that truly drive competitive differentiation for your organizations. This is the forcing function to drive transformation to the cloud, adopt agile approaches to deliver new products, to create business value, including revenue streams. I'm really optimistic that this recovery in every industry will be driven by the CIO, Chief Digital Officer function. Having a financial foundation in place for your technology investments will be paramount in this new world. For those that may have been on the sidelines of TBM, now is the time to establish this foundation so you can have a fact-based discussion and effectively manage the digital transformation. And those of you who have had Aptio in place during this pandemic have been able to very quickly respond on scenario planning, cost cutting, as well as managing new digital investments. Here are just a few quotes from some of our customers who leveraged Aptio over the past year to help them navigate through these unprecedented times. But today isn't about the past. It is truly about the future. This virtual world has given me the opportunity to connect with 400 plus CIOs in the last six months and how do they really emerge in their organizations post COVID. The top four priorities that are top of mind for them are forecast and replan. In fact, I hear zero-based budgeting quite a bit as we go into 2021. Cost optimization, cloud acceleration, and lastly, driving digital transformation via agile delivery. When the disruption hit, every organization needed to replan and reforecast. Top lines were disrupted hugely, and CFOs wanted CIOs to have optionality in the budgets. CIOs had to budget and replan sometimes three to four times just in the last few months alone. Now everybody's operating in this new normal and putting their 2021 plans together. With Aptio, organizations have been able to uncover targeted addressable spend that can be cut, postponed, or reinvested into critical priorities. Do zero-based budgeting from bottoms up. Set cost optimization targets to be able to return some of that capital or reinvest in new digital programs. Organizations that were managing this process in spreadsheets or homegrown planning cubes were really unable to keep pace with demands. In fact, I was talking to one of the large hotel chain CIOs recently. Their top line was disrupted 90%. Aptio really enabled them to find these extra cost levers during this unprecedented time. With Aptio, organizations were able to optimize their costs by making informed decisions from a single system of record, shift run to change by optimizing RTB spend to fund digital innovation, 
And lastly, communicate value of IT, specifically translating IT speak to the business language, which can be a challenge. In the past, this would have required many months to work to build a cost and a value mo model manually to understand fully burdened costs, identify areas of opportunity through disparate systems to plan and track progress. But with Aptio, their time was reduced from months to days to hours. I wanted to share the five decisions our customers are making for cost optimization during this time with Aptio. Number one, application rationalization, retiring redundant applications and ensuring all costs of software, hardware are really taken off your general ledger. Number two, efficiently shifting labor capacity between investment projects and products. Number three, duplicate vendor and SaaS spend, redundant vendors supplying the same capabilities, massive SaaS sprawl within your organization without understanding who's utilizing these SaaS applications and are you getting the right price. Number four, optimizing cloud and hybrid. We are finding up to 20% optimization in public cloud spend and also helping reduce the on-premise spend on depreciated servers, reducing data center footprint, migrating utilized development, test servers, and storage to the cloud. Number five, optimizing really consumption of technology with the business. Let's face it, a lot of the waste in IT is created via consumption by the business. By making it a fact-based discussion with the business, our leaders have been able to change the dialogue and alter consumption of technology. But don't just take it from me. I want you to hear from one of our customers, Marshfield Clinic, a nonprofit healthcare system with over 50 locations in Wisconsin. They were able to quickly cost cut in the early stages of COVID-19 for their business. This is a really inspiring story, and I hope all of you enjoy it like I did. I am so grateful that we have AppView and that our IS teams already know how to use it. This made a big difference for us, and we could immediately point our team to Actio, which was in place. They were already familiar with all of this. Also, just as Actio is a trusted advisor for us with TBM, we have established trust across our organization and our IT leaders in the information we are using. So we weren't spending time explaining or justifying where the information came from. And earlier we talked about speed being important. And if there is anything I've learned over the last few weeks is that speed is essential during a pandemic. Our ability to share data and reports broadly with my colleagues on the CEO council and other decision makers across our organization really brought the IT partnership to the spotlight. Cloud remains the way organizations have gotten massive scale, elasticity and new capabilities. Customers I speak to are really in three phases, primarily mired in legacy on one spectrum, on the extreme right is cloud first. But the majority of you are somewhere in the middle in true hybrid computing. As you've pursued the cloud, many have done so without cloud financial management best practices. By leveraging Aptio for the cloud acceleration, organizations have been able to compare fully burdened costs by getting a single view of hybrid IT and compare this against public cloud costs. A Lot of times you see spikes in the overall spending as you still have fixed data center costs and assets. We do help our customers solve this by doing OPEX to CAPEX comparisons, putting together a multi-year view as well as doing apples to apples comparisons. By identifying and analyzing cloud migration candidates, I'm excited to share with you an amazing conversation I had with RJ Harza, Chief Financial Officer of Technology and Operations at Equifax, about how they are leveraging Aptio cloud capabilities to really support the journey to the cloud. Well, I know we've uh, had plenty of chats on Equifax's digital transformation journey. Uh, so can you speak uh, around the digital transformation journey you're on and uh, specifically a uh, role of uh, uh, cloud services. Absolutely. You know, the, the word that comes to mind for me, Sonny, is really incredible. Uh, incredibly challenging for uh, the technology teams in terms of understanding and untangling old code, defining roadmaps, really rationalizing our footprint. 
Um, but, you know, in, incredible kind of value that we've been able to unlock for our customers and our shareholders and going through this exercise of really rebuilding our total tech stack and our security posture. And it really has helped us in terms of speed to market, uh, efficiencies, enhanced security posture, as well as stability. Yeah, that's, uh, that's amazing, RJ. So uh, like speaking of cloud, I know that's such a big area of focus for you. And uh, as a CFO for technology, I know you're playing a pretty massive role in this move. Um, as an example, we're going from an on-prem infrastructure world really to cloud native, which changes the dynamic in terms of having a lot of metal that's uh, on your balance sheet and then uh, depreciated and amortized uh, to really a much more variable construct as you think about scaling up for the cloud and cost scaling up in accordance to volume and so on and so forth. You know, with that, I, I would say, look, as, as I think about those continued focus areas, I, I really think about understanding how pricing shifts when you're in a variable, um, when you're in a variable cost structure where certain transactions before may not have costed anything uh, from a cost of goods sold perspective, but does today, and how that impacts your margin profile, your forecasting, um, so on and so forth. And in addition to that, really understanding, you know, the, understanding the length of time that you're going to be in this double bubble situation is uh, really helpful um, because you really get out of it post-migration of all your, your customers and shutting down your legacy stack, and you have to understand what's the investment required and it's a considerable level of investment to kind of get you through those processes. I know recently you chose Aptio Cloud Ability as a solution for you to manage uh, this journey to the cloud. And uh, very curious in uh, your decision criteria of choosing Cloud Ability over other solutions. And uh, what specific challenges have you been able to solve in a short time? So congratulations to you and the team for, for making that part of the decision extremely easy. Uh, for us to choose, right? Uh, in addition to that, I would say um, when we went down to the selection process for us, it was about reducing friction. As we've discussed, there's plenty of challenges that the technology teams and the finance teams have to work through in terms of a transformation this size. And I really go to the operations before the financial information to say, hey, how do we think about architecture and changes that we need to make in our cloud environments to make them the most efficient as possible? So can you just speak to uh, the importance of Aptio integrating with uh, the different uh, tools uh, you use for other capabilities? Yeah, I mean, I probably can't speak enough to the importance of that integration capability. And then again, going back to why we, we selected CloudAbility as, as, an, as a critical vendor for us and a critical tool for us, I should say. Look, we leverage ServiceNow significantly. We have our own ERP and financial systems, and those will always be the source of truth for us in terms of how we look at our financial records. But having the ability to integrate the three, where we have cloud ability as an example that gives us a very nice level of detail as it pertains to the multiple cloud providers that we're utilizing, and then marrying that up with the ServiceNow application level detail or our ITAM, has been incredibly helpful for us because it reduces, as an example, the level of tagging that we need to do in terms of our cloud environments, which then helps our engineers in terms of efficiency because what we're doing is we're basically taking some tagging from uh, a cloud environment perspective, additional tagging from a ServiceNow perspective, putting that together and then marrying that up with our financial details to then give a full more complete picture in terms of how we're doing from a cloud perspective, our, our efficiency, cost, and so on. So let's talk about the future, RJ. Uh, I know uh, DevOps and uh, shifting to Agile is big, along with sort of the movement to the cloud. You know, all of the things that you just mentioned in terms of moving to an Agile development framework, I'll, I'll layer on moving to a product-led organization are very much um, strategic prerogatives that I think Equifax is making significant progress towards and in. And I think tools like Aptio, CloudAbility, and TBM management really do that, right? It, uh, it clears out the black box that sometimes technology can be and really uh, gives operational metrics and outcomes that both finance individuals, business individuals, or I should say all three, and technology individuals can go use and drive decisions out of. Thank you, RJ, for this amazing conversation. 
In addition to cloud services, technology leaders are embracing agile and lean portfolio management as the preferred method to deliver new innovation with a product mindset. Customers still have investments in traditional waterfall methodologies, but are now establishing a center of excellence for agile transformation to really deliver on these new software capabilities. Some customers are abandoning traditional timesheet tracking capabilities in favor of new methods that are more activity-based. We've had great success in helping organizations do this with Agile Investment Management, which we launched earlier this year. With Agile Investment Management, customers have been able to accelerate delivery by aggregating team-level activity from systems like Jira, Rally Software, Version 1, Microsoft Visual Studio, to really portfolio product-level investments. They measure costs and value of development teams. They've been able to improve agility by shifting resources to support portfolio reprioritization and reiterating quickly. They've been able to deduce CapEx and OpEx given change and run happens in the same team. And finally, they've been able to automate the funding and budgeting process for this extremely complicated world. This is only because we integrate with activity systems like Jira and can automatically deduce these rules. One example of this incredible partnership is with Atlassian that we are announcing today. Aptio and Atlassian together have provided our customers with the best of both worlds by bringing technology business management to the world of software delivery and integrating our products together. Here is a deeper look into the financial lens that is at work between Aptio and Atlassian. Atlassian being the work management system, I had really the honor of sitting down with Atlassian CEO, Scott Farquhar, who spoke with me about the role of software of modern organizations and how we are collectively partnering together to bring this innovation to our customers. Every company wants to be a digital first company and obviously COVID is accelerating everything. I'm curious what your view is on this change to the nature of technology delivery. Well, I think there's been a huge change in uh, an acceleration of work um, over the past few months. And it used to be that uh, the HR team provided the water cooler and it's now up to the CIO to provide the digital or virtual water cooler. We've really brought 10 years worth of digital transformation uh, into this COVID period. And if you think about it, um, CIOs you know, finally have the job they've always wanted, which is providing business value uh, to their employees and to their customers. Um, we're no longer talking about operating system upgrades or data center upgrades like with the cloud and software. Uh, you know, CIOs are now much more um, uh, central to uh, you know, a business's strategy. And if you think about what Atlassian does, uh, we are the only company that allows a CIO to um, handle everything from concept all the way through to launching a product and then supporting it and maintaining it and upgrading it. I know we are uh, mutual customers of each other. Uh, Atlassian um, is a big Aptio Cloudability cus customer. What is your view and uh, from just an Atlassian perspective of why did you decide to automate that process? Look, I've run Atlassian for 20 years and I think there's a almost a truism in the technology industry that you can manage anything in spreadsheets. You know, you can write a novel in a spreadsheet. Uh, you know, you could track a software development process with 300 people in a spreadsheet if you want to. Um, but spreadsheets aren't the best tool uh, to use uh, for these things. Like they, um, they really, uh, you know, break down. And these days, instead of using a spreadsheet, using a fit for purpose tool, whether that is, you know, Confluence for collaboration or Jira for tracking work, or it's Aptio to track you know, the costs and the ROI of your projects is a much better use of your dollars and investment. And, you know, because they're fit for purpose, they will show you things you didn't even know uh, were, were possible. Um, but also it frees up your highly paid staff to focus on the value that gets produced for your customers, as opposed to tracking projects in spreadsheets, which I think is just not a, not a very good use of your employees' time. Appio provides the financial management for technology, Atlassian, obviously the market leader for work management. And we've had the pleasure of starting to work together and building a stronger product connections and data flows between Atlassian and Appio products. So from your perspective, Scott, what's the value of applying financial lens to work for, a, for an enterprise? Um, you look as a CEO, um, and I talk to many other CEOs, 
uh, financial literacy like is something that you wish you know all your employees had more of like no one no one's ever said that they don't want uh, their employees to know more about the cost of projects and the ROI and so applying uh, that financial lens to your projects you can make better portfolio level decisions about where you should invest your you know scarce people resources uh, and uh, you know at the end of the day then hopefully make better decisions about how you win uh, in the marketplace. A company like Goldman Sachs, you know, last time I checked has eight or 10,000 software engineers, you know, very hard for one person to sit in a room and direct and orchestrate 10,000 people. So what you're, you try and do is to give them decision making criteria that they can make better decisions. And you want to map in your, your epics and your, uh, you know, your projects and your stories uh, all the way up to a portfolio view. You want to link them back to financial returns and uh, you know the combination of Aptio. We're really excited. Like you know, we get great feedback um, you know from our joint customers about how this works, and uh, we couldn't be more excited to continue the partnership. Thank you, Scott, for your incredible perspective. We are honored to continue evolving the TBM discipline in Aptio since our founding in 2007, based on your feedback. Over the past 13 years, we have launched cloud financial management, hybrid taxonomy, agile, and SaaS optimization. Aptio has evolved, and now we are the market leader for IT financial management and cloud. But our evolution wouldn't have been possible without the support of our amazing customers, you. And in fact, this past year, we have hit 1,000 total customer mark. Can you believe that? 1,000 customers. We're also now managing $10 billion of cloud spend and are currently managing $600 billion of global technology spending worldwide. But that's not all. Over the past year, we have also expanded geographically. Last year, when I was on stage at TBMC, I talked about opening of our India Center of Excellence. This year, I'm excited to announce the opening of our center in Japan and have begun accelerating our investments in Asia, European, and public sector markets. None of the work we do would be possible without our partners and the tools that we integrate with. Many of you tell us continuously that Aptio has to integrate in an ecosystem with many other systems and tools. All the way from financial systems like Workday, Anaplan, SAP, to operational systems like ServiceNow, New Relic, to project and agile execution systems like Jira. Our position is at the center of financial and operational management tool sets, so you can see best of breed technologies in the areas that require it, but leverage Aptio as your single source of truth for technology, finance, and business teams this is why our partnerships are so critical. An example is how we work with ServiceNow from a technology partnership perspective. We see ServiceNow in approximately 60% of our joint accounts and work alongside them to help organizations support service management with really the necessary financial and operational decision-making. The two platforms are very complementary. Hundreds of Aptio customers pull ServiceNow data into Aptio from CMDB, ticketing, project capabilities, and we use this data to drive finer grain allocations and decision-making. We also see an incredible opportunity to provide a closed-loop process back into ServiceNow around actionable insights, cleaning up CMDB, et cetera. Recently, I sat down with Victor Tung, Chief Operating Officer at BMO Financial Group, and had an incredible conversation about their journey with Aptio and how our solutions with ServiceNow are used together. I'm excited to share the story with you. Any kind of major impacts COVID has had on your IT strategy? I think it's a shift to digital has just been really, really fast, right? Um, you know, traditional from an IT perspective, traditional things that would have taken months or years to do, we've been managed to do in, in weeks. Um, and the consumption patterns of our products have shifted, right? You don't have people actually walking in a branch. Um, you know, they're leveraging more of uh, the digital connection points from their mobile to mobile devices to online to even uh, contact center. Uh, can you speak to why you decided to purchase uh, Aptio? I would say the big 
change was when I first took, taken on the COO role for overall tech tech and operations, right? And uh, we actually had a big pivot in terms of our operating model. We truly believe in this because in order to actually drive the change, you, you don't just look at you know a big chunk from from a tech infrastructure perspective and then one for operations. Everything's interconnected. And in order for to make that as a realization, a big foundation of that is actually having transparency. So that's when we engaged uh, at that point with your team. And, uh, and it's been, a, and it's been a great experience so far, and it's really paid uh, dividends as we're kind of going down the journey, uh, helping us kind of drive out all of the um, transparency and, and understanding and education with our business partners more, uh, more so than anything. From a business case perspective, s- simple things as in actually understanding how many devices per, per user, um, understanding how many servers that are tied to an application, like the, uh, which actually then help us um, derive it from an app rationalization or a service rationalization and product rationalization perspective, which, which actually help justify the, the business case for putting in this capability. And it just jumps out in spades, right? Spades, right? When you actually, yeah. when you have it all in one place. Uh, can you just speak to the role you see after you're playing relative to other systems, specifically something like ServiceNow and your financial systems? And there's always um, best of breed for everything in its place for um, these different platforms to exist. Um, we actually made 140 different integration points to, into Aptio, right? And then the, the real value actually came out is when you actually got them all, all, all connected in. And then you have different permutations and, and different dimensions in which we can actually look at things that we couldn't in the past, right? How you used to do this, you hire a bunch of people, you have different spreadsheets and you have different perspectives, but having it all in one place and the flexibility of platform has just been, been an amazing, amazing ride. ServiceNow would act more as our, our book of our book of record for um, uh, like from from a CMDB perspective, um, and Aptio is uh, more from a um, not just a, a cost allocation perspective as as one one view for it. Um, I don't really they don't really overlap. They they really work in tandem together. Victor, so give us uh, maybe the three tangible business outcomes Aptio or TBM has been able to deliver for BMO? Helping us uh, create operating leverage in terms of our, our, our financial, um, you know, big part of transformation is uh, traditional measure uh, is around the measurement of run versus maintain costs, uh, run, run, maintain versus uh, change can transform costs. So uh, that allows us to do a big shift around there. Um, to um, you know, optimize our co- uh, cost base, and uh, three is really just helping us in, in terms of the dialogue around transparency. Would love to kind of hear where are you on the cloud transformation journey at BMO, and really what role do you see Aptio and TBM playing for you? Um, so I, I, I would say we're I wouldn't say we're actually mature. We're in the early stages, um, but. I, with with everybody, I would say that we all operate in a multi multi cloud environment and, and a hybrid environment. I see you guys playing a big role as a scorekeepers and make sure we're getting value for money. Thank you, Victor, for your incredible insights. Earlier, you heard me talk about Aptio's evolution, and at this very point in time, we are entering a new chapter in our journey. And this chapter is driven by simply one word, simplicity. Simplicity to us means making every part of the process of TBM fundamentally easy and drastically cut down the time to value for you. We are investing hundreds of resources in artificial intelligence, machine learning to bring this platform to you. There are three key areas of innovation for us. One, in our core, ingesting data, modeling data, cost allocations, reporting, visualizations, and driving actionable insights. Number two, in the area of cloud, providing best-in-class multi-cloud cost management, extending that to hybrid workloads, and also to SaaS spend management. And lastly, bring the best of breed of portfolio management capabilities for agile and projects, and demand planning with the business. I'm really excited about demand planning. It's about a business at a high level describing the business drivers 
For example, how many employees will I hire in different functions? And then creating an IT plan based upon those. Because we want you to be able to input your data into Aptio, make yourself a cup of coffee, and have insights within minutes. Here's your first look at the next chapter of Aptio. And to mark the beginning of this new chapter, I'm excited to announce the launch of Aptio Cloudability SaaS application. We recently acquired the company SaaS license. This is a very disruptive technology where it discovers all SaaS applications via Active Directory, Ping, Okta, general ledger systems, travel and expense. It can really combine financials and utilization and provide real recommendations on, on who's using it and what are the optimization opportunities. In fact, we deployed this application within Aptio IT within less than one hour. Earlier, I showed you this slide highlighting the role that Aptio plays in our ecosystem. Now, with Aptio's Cloudability SaaS, Aptio will now be able to integrate with hundreds and thousands of SaaS applications including Slack, Tableau, Salesforce, and many, many more. I am so fired up by this, and I'm excited for you to hear about this more in depth tomorrow. I know that I shared a lot with you today, but believe it or no, this is only the tip of the iceberg ahead of what our chief technology and product officer, Scott Chancellor, will be sharing tomorrow. Scott will share some very exciting announcements about the Aptio product portfolio and preview major investment areas for 2021 that ensured the success of every Aptio customer. This is a session you won't want to miss. To wrap this up, I just want to say thank you to all of you and remind you that Aptio and TBM are here to support you. We are here alongside you every step of the way as you prepare to exit COVID. Thank you and stay safe.